Okay, so we have everything here to upgrade this white MacBook, including something to sit it on, a screwdriver, which has the right size point on it, a 10 cent piece to take the battery out, two times two gigabyte sticks of DDR2 RAM to max it out to the four gigabytes, a 320 gigabyte Western digital hard drive, and a DVD dual layer disc to burn the OS2, and of course a permanent marker to write onto. The battery should come out with ease just by turning it like so. And right here we have MacBook rechargeable battery. And I believe that the, uh, according to this diagram here, the RAM can be removed by unscrewing this aluminium panel, and also access to the hard drive can be gained from there, I believe as well. So we'll get to that and start upgrading. It could do with a bit of a clean. We'll also, of course, do that. The aluminium cover has been removed. And right here we have the access to the RAM and the hard drive. So we'll just pop this little tab out. And we should be able to pull it to reveal the original hard drive, which should be a 160 gigabyte drive, if I'm not mistaken. We'll take a look at that. And we can swap it over. It's held into its caddy by four Phillips head screws, just with the SATA connector on it. You can also eject the RAM. And I wonder if it's got the uh, white coating to it. Yes, it does. I think all MacBooks had that. And this RAM in question is two one gigabyte sticks of uh, DDR2 RAM. I'm not entirely sure what the speed it's running at, but the new RAM is 533 MHz, so regardless, even if this RAM was running at a faster clock speed, um, it'll it'll definitely uh, performance increase with the new RAM. So it's the same sticks, two times one gigabyte sticks, and we'll upgrade it right now. And the new RAM consists of two times Hynix two gigabyte sticks, 533 MHz, I believe, although I could be wrong. And hopefully, they operate and work correctly in this MacBook. And something else that I just noticed, the screws that hold this hard drive into place are actually the torque screws. So thankfully, we have this screwdriver kit. Otherwise, there'd been a bit of trouble. We couldn't proceed with the upgrade. But courtesy of this, it's going to proceed. The new Western Digital Scorpio drive has been installed into the caddy and that's ready to be put back in. And the old hard drive here doesn't have too much information on it apart from the fact that it was manufactured by Fujitsu and it is 160 gigabytes capacity manufactured in September 2009. The RAM and the hard drive have been upgraded and it's time to reinsert the battery. It actually helped to Insert the battery the right way. Probably this way first. Unless something's stopping it. Everything's reinserted and plugged back in. All powered up and hopefully it actually boots. We don't get any beeping. And there we have a screen. Sounds like the hard drive is operational, so all we have to do now is burn the OS to the disk and install it. Now we have the Snow Leopard Retail DMG image on the computer here on a Windows PC, and we will burn it using Power ISO. So we'll continue the evaluation version, and we can now burn this. Burning speed will bring it down to six times just to be safe it's an image file now we can hit burn and hopefully it burns it to the disk the dvd has been burnt os x snow leopard is on the disk so we'll insert this into the drive and hopefully it actually boots so what we'll do we'll turn it off and then switch it back on again and upon pressing the c key we have managed to get it to boot from the DVD 
and by the looks of it at the moment it's just booting and loading the installer off the disk although we do have this um, icon that's just appeared so we'll find out what this means whether it means that the install cannot proceed and some hours later and after several failed attempts of booting from these two Mac OS Snow Leopard discs that I've created both two completely different images, both refused to boot, it just came up with the Apple logo, the spinning wheel, and then a stop icon, and it just sat there. It didn't go any further. We've managed to source this Mac OS Snow Leopard retail disc that I've managed to get from a friend, and it's installing, and it looks like it's going to continue and be a successful installation. Install succeeded. It's been a successful installation, so I'll hit the restart button. And Snow Leopard has been installed, we've just run the software update and it's currently installing the five items which consisted of a few different updates so it will be running Snow Leopard 10.6.8, the latest version and the last version of Snow Leopard that was released. And yet another large amount of software updates and also installing various different software. And this is the end result of the white MacBook being fixed up and all repaired, upgraded as well. I've gone ahead and given it a clean with methylated spirits and also a bathroom planner which has removed most of the brown uh, smearing that was on it. So uh, it was probably just dirt from the previous owner's um, hands or probably just years of not being cleaned or it could have also been sitting in the UV light. But nevertheless, the keyboard's come up looking quite good. There is a little bit of a brownish colour to some of the keys, but it's certainly looking much better than what it was when I first received it. As you can see here, if I go to About This Mac, the OS has been all updated, running Mac OS 10.6.8 Snow Leopard. And as you can see, it actually uh, updates the copyright to 2011. And it has 4 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM running at 667 MHz, so I was wrong before when I mentioned that it was running at 533. So going into the system profiler, you can see the base specifications of it. The Corsu Duo 2.13 GHz with 3 MB of level 2 cache, 4 GB of RAM and 1.07 GHz front side bus speed. The audio is just the standard uh, Realtek HD audio. And this model is the mid-2009 type, so this was soon to be replaced by the uh, late 2009 unibody white MacBook, which had similar specs. This one has a considerable performance increase over the previous form of white MacBooks. Uh, the previous ones had Intel integrated graphics. This one has the NVIDIA GeForce 9400M video card which uses 256 megabytes of shared memory and this actually has an NVIDIA chipset so it's completely NVIDIA based which is quite neat as well. Checking the hard drive you can also see that it is the uh, upgraded Western Digital 320 gigabytes capacity as you can see there 5400 RPM and the Matasha DVD burner which also functions just fine. The battery has a cycle count of 136 cycles and it's currently sitting on 95% as you can see and if we go to that supporting 4 hours and 2 minutes remaining so it, it appears to be working just fine which is good and also some various software installed on the dock as you can see including Apple iLife 09 and Microsoft Office 2008. The outside including the lid and underneath has also been cleaned. The sticker residue has been removed, which has made it come up looking much nicer. There is a little bit of surface scratching if you put it into the light, but otherwise it cannot be noticed. There is one scratch there, but apart from that, it looks very good, almost in new condition, as you could say. This one doesn't actually have any cracking around the palm rest, like... Uh, the majority of white MacBooks, they were prone to developing cracks if they received heavy use. But anyway, as you can see, 
all the ports and everything looks just fine. And looking underneath it, it also looks good as well. A little bit of scratching, but it's come up looking quite good. So an overall good success. And on a side note, let's see how long it takes to boot the machine up since the specs have been upgraded. It's around 36 seconds from the bong noise to the desktop. 